be awesome. So good to be in the house of the Lord. This beautiful family at Brookside. All right, one last time, if you could just make your way to your seats, we'll get started. <laughs> All right, we're going to open with a word of prayer this morning. Father, we just thank you. We thank you. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. It's really good to be in your house. Father, I pray today that we wouldn't leave the same as we came. And I pray today that we wouldn't make this about us, but we would make it about you. I pray that you would be glorified. I pray that we would enter into the holy place with you today. The place where transformation takes place. Where yokes are exchanged and strongholds are broken. I pray that you would bring your perfect unity into this place this morning that we would be of one mind and one accord, and that is to give you glory, to worship you, no matter what happens, no matter what's already occurred this morning, you're still good, and you're still worthy of worship. I pray that you would tenderize our hearts in your presence this morning, and that we would become more like you. I pray that we would remember all you've done for us, Bring back to our remembrance your goodness and your mercy and your grace, Lord, so that we may be graceful, merciful, loving people. Help us to give away, God, freely what we have freely been given. I pray that you, we would be poured out like drink offerings to this world, that we would shine so bright before men that they would desire what we have. It's all about you, God. May we come back to the heart of worship this morning where it's all about you. It's not about us having a good day or a good service. It's about your name being glorified and lifted high on this earth, that all men would be restored to you. And we just thank you and we praise you. And we truly give you all the glory and honor, Lord, for you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. So if you're new this morning, our awesome family here at Brookside has welcome packets we'd like to get to you. Um, that way you can get to know us, we can get to know you about what's going on in the house of God. <clears throat> our new drummer and his beautiful wife, Maxine, um, are gonna wel they welcome their new baby girl, Genevieve. Congratulations, welcome to the family. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, times for intercessory prayer, super important. Saturday evenings at 5.30 p.m., Wednesday mornings at 9.30 a.m., and the first Wednesday night of the month at 6.30 p.m. During Sunday services, there are four stations positioned. You'll see the chairs, Sally, and then in the back. And they're all positioned there. They pray for us and intercede for us as, we, um, as the word is given. BMC Edge Youth are meeting on Wednesday night, October 23rd at 6.30 p.m. Any questions, see Alicia. Alicia, can you wave? That's the awesome Alicia. <laughs> yes, yeah, she's doing a wonderful job with her youth. Thank you to all involved with her youth. A Glow Fall Harvest Gathering is next Saturday, October 26th at 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, it's here at Brookside Ministries, but you must pre-register. There's, I'm assuming, but you know what happens. But I think that um, out in the foyer, there's a, a sign-up sheet for that. Uh, men's breakfast, Saturday, November 2nd at 8 a.m. Um, Operation Christmas child shoe boxes. Uh, did, oh, one second. I have one more before the shoe box. Um, there's going to be a bake sale um, for Deja Brill, who is our child we sponsor, our children's ministry sponsors. That's going to be um, November 3rd. 
and this is to raise money for, um, as he, through Compassion International, is to raise money for a Christmas gift and for his birthday, for his uh, family. In the past, our donations have allowed them to get clothing, shoes, food, necessities that we take for granted. We're providing for this kid and his family. So make sure you buy up all the bad stuff and just give it away if you don't want to eat it. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's what God kind of does. <laughs> I don't need it here. <laughs> Anyway, so I'd like to defer to Lorelai now. Thank you. I remember. <laughs> so everybody, good morning to everyone. Um, has anyone been looking at the marquee out front at the church there? How many people read it? I want to know how many people read it when they go by. <laughs> Okay, then you should know that Operation Samaritan's Purse uh, boxes are coming up. Um, the dedication date is the 17th, but um, you should be getting them ready now. It does take a while. We have some over here ready that have been started. Um, and we also have a clip that's coming up. So if somebody could flip the lights and we'll show that first. open their boxes, you can hear the laughter, the cheer. Each gift brings a joy to their heart. Jesus said, let the little children come to me. I want the children to know that Jesus Christ is alive and he'll come into each and every heart that invites him. The mission of Operation Christmas Child is to share the gospel with children around the world. Every shoebox gift is delivered with a verbal and written proclamation of the gospel in more than 100 countries every year. Jesus loves you. This is an evangelism project, and it all starts with a very simple shoebox gift. Volunteers are really the heart of who we are and what we do. When we pack the boxes, it's a reflection, a little glimpse of God's love that we're pouring out. When you pack the box, pray. We never know how God is going to use that box. They go by plane, they go by riverboat, they go by motorbikes. These shoe boxes go to children in some of the most isolated areas of the world. Your shoe box goes from you filling it full of toys to all ends of the earth to share the name of Jesus Christ. This box gives us a chance to show them that there is a light, that there is a truth. After receiving shoebox gifts, children are invited to a 12-lesson discipleship program, The Greatest Journey. The child is discipled, not only know God, but make God known to others. They started to know the power of prayer. They want to know more. From this, we are seeing lives transformed for the kingdom of God. When I was 14 years old, I started teaching my first The Greatest Journey lesson. If I shared the gospel to them, I really, really hope that they share the gospel with everyone they know. The 
the heart of Operation Christmas Child is evangelism, discipleship, and multiplication. Because we bring gift to the children, the mothers and the fathers accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. In every church, we are teaching them how to reach out to their neighbors. Operation Christmas Child became the answer from God. Children are taking the gospel to the ends of the earth. And it's time for us to go where no one else went, so the gospel can cover this earth just the way the water covered the ocean. Let's pray for the outreach to continue. It has to be our burden to reach them with the gospel. Millions of children around the world are being impacted by these simple shoebox gifts. So we need to keep packing those boxes and continue to pray for the children around the world as we begin to disciple them. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just had a couple other things to add. How many people have done shoeboxes before? Well, this year, I just want to ask everybody to try and do one shoebox and try and make our goal 200 in the front of this church. And think about it. You don't have to go very far. And at the same time, you're sharing the word with a child somewhere around the world. It could even be here in our own country because sometimes they do go to places where um, there's been disaster relief. Um, also, someone was just asking me about these red boxes, these red and green ones. Um, the Sunbury Bible Depot has these on sale. I, I'm putting in a plug for them right now. They're a buck, a, a dollar a piece. So um, if any of you want to get them there, that's a good place, I think. You don't have to go online or anything to buy them. But I'm really excited, you guys. I want to see everybody get out there for another child, OK? Come on, especially you kids. You kids can go out there. And you, you love to make shoeboxes, I bet. It's the parents who have to put the money out, right? <laughs> OK. Maybe uh, the kids could donate a little bit of their bank money to that, OK? I'm looking at the kids, but nobody's shaking their head. <laughs> Okay, have a good one. Good morning. Can we all stand and join in reading of the word today? We're in Isaiah 55. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. So are my ways higher than your ways. Praise the Lord. A great scripture to memorize and to meditate on. Can you say amen? Amen. Christmas boxes. Every year I try to have at least 10 boxes. And you know what's going to happen? When I get to heaven and some of these children will receive the Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they're going to walk up to me and thank me. <laughs> Praise God. This morning, we, before we start worship, in fact, we yeah, thank the Lord for the offering. We have offering plates up here, and these offering plates is going to be a walking offering, a time of worship as we put our offering in. The worship team will begin the worship service at that time so we can walk up and put our offering in. Can you say amen? amen. We're going to pray over the offering right now. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for everything you do for us. We know, Lord, that you've blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. We know this, that, Lord, that you make sure that our needs are met. We thank you for the opportunity of sharing in your kingdom. So bless the offering today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And everybody said, 
All right, before we take up the offering, or rather you come up with the offering, let me just say this. The Spirit of God is here. Wherever the Spirit of God is, the kingdom of God is. How many are listening to me? So what does that mean? The kingdom's here today because the Spirit of the Lord's here. But in the New Testament, he does come upon us to perform miracles. He comes upon us to heal our bodies. He comes upon us to encourage us. So we're going to invite him to do that. Are you ready? ready. I'm asking if you're ready because he's going to do something in your life before you leave today. He's going to touch you mightily by his presence and by his power and his anointing. He's going to give you a new freedom within. You're going to be praising God when you leave here today, and you're going to be telling other people about the service. Thank God for that. Can you say amen? amen. All right. Dear Spirit of God, you came with us. You are inside of us. Come upon us. Come upon this service. Heal. Restore. Save. In Jesus, name. In Jesus' name, we welcome you, we welcome you. Upon, us right upon us right now with your power, with your, power. With your, anointing. With your anointing, and we thank you for it. We give you praise. Glory to God. Glory to God. We lift your voice in praise. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you. We love you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I believe he just touched somebody in the area of healing. I believe that happened right now during our worships. Let me know after the service if you were the one, okay? Praise God. Let's join in with worship. Impossible ever stop you. Friday's disappointment is Sunday's empty tomb. Since when has impossible has it ever stopped you? This is the sound of dry bones rattling. The praise make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Pentecostal fire. It's stirring something new. You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon. Resurrection power runs in my veins too. And I believe there's another miracle here in this world. This is the sound of drop bones rattling. Oh, this is the place, make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of drop bones rattling. Or anything that he wants to 
Just ask the man who was thrown on the bones of Elisha if there's anything that he can do. And just ask the stone that was rolled in the tomb in the garden. What happens when God says to me, oh, I feel him do. And this is the praise, make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out and I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Cause this is the sound of drop bones rattling. Oh, this is the sound of drop bones rattling. This is the praise, make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out, I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Open the grave, I'm coming out, and I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Open the grave, I'm coming out, I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of drop bones rattling. In this house, just lift up your hands right now and just give him some worship. Lord, we worship you. We love you. We thank you, God. You are here in our midst. Oh, your promises are yeah. 
Promises, they are yes and nay. 
Give him a shout in this place, church. Go ahead, lift it up right now. Lift your voice. God, we thank you for your faithfulness. Your faithfulness endures through it all. Through good times, bad times, those times, you are faithful and true. Amen. Amen. Praise you, Lord God. We praise you. We praise you, God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord God, that you are faithful that your name is above every name, that no matter what we are faced with, we know that we can always lift up your name. We could speak Jesus at every problem we encounter, at every challenge we face. Come on, church, we speak Jesus right now. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The mountains... They will move when we, when we speak his name. Every tongue will confess the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We speak Jesus. There's a name that levels mountains. It's one name, right? It carves out highways through the sea. I've seen its power unravel battles right in front of me. There's a faith that stands to fight. It sends Goliath to his knees. I've seen that praise unravel shackles right off my feet. And that's the power of your name. Just a mention makes a way. Giants fall as strongholds break. There is healing. That's the power that I claim. It's the same that rolled the grave. There's no power like the mighty name of Jesus. There's a hope that calls out courage In the furnace unafraid The kind of daring expectation That every prayer I make Is on an empty grave And that's the power of your name Just a Makes a way, giants fall as strongholds break, and there is healing. That's the power that I claim. It's the same that rolled the grave. There's no power like the mighty name of Jesus. There's no power like the mighty name of Jesus.
Do you believe that, church? Your spirit's breaking out. Your kingdom's moving in. Your victory claims the ground, not the enemy. Yeah. And you still do miracles. You will do what you said. For you're the same God now as you've always been. And that's the power of your name. Just a mention makes a way. Giants fall that strongholds break and there is healing. That's the power that I claim. It's the same that rolled the grave. There's no power like the mighty name of Jesus. There's no power like the mighty name of Jesus. There's no power. Like the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, yes, God, we believe in your name and we believe in the power of your name. That sickness will retreat at the mention of your name. that circumstances change at the mention of your name. That problems become solved at the mention of your name, God. So I was picking out the songs and I was just sort of getting my download from the Holy Spirit and I thought, well, let me look up a verse about how powerful the name of Jesus is. And there's like 95,000, I couldn't pick one. Come on, church. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. All oh, the mountains tremble. All oh, the demons flee. At the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. for your love that endures and it's never ending. We thank you, God, you loved us before you even created us, before we came to being. Yes, God, we thank you.
spoke a word you were singing over me you have been so so good to me before i took a breath you breathed your life in me You have been so, so kind to me. And all the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99, and I couldn't hurt. Deserve it still you give yourself away and all the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God your foe, still your love fought for me. You've been so, so good to me. And I felt no worth, you paid it.
Yes, God, we thank you for your love. When that first, when that song first came out, there's a lot of critics. They said, how can you call God's love reckless? That's what we call people that treat us sometimes the way we treat God, how we turn our backs, how we fall into all kind of nasty stuff. And through all those things, his love, his love for us is unwavering. The Bible actually says he will love us in the pit of hell, that we can't hide from him anywhere, not even in, in hell. We can't hide from his love there. His love lasts forever. And we don't even really understand what unconditional love is because we're conditional people. We don't want to be. I don't want it, but we are. Your love is reckless. Your love is reckless. How great your love, how great is your love. Your love is reckless. Come on, sing that with me. Your love is reckless. Your love is reckless. How great is your love? How great is your love? Your love is with the uh... 
Praise the Lord. You were really singing this morning. It sounded like a bunch of angels singing. It really did. You were really into it. Thank God for that. Rachel's got a word from the Lord for us. Oof. For the Lord wants to, for the Lord would like to change how we feel about God and the love of God. For the Lord says that many of us relate to our Heavenly Father and the love of God, how we relate to our parental figures, whether it be your father, your mother, whoever was significant in your life. 
And my dad always teaches that how we feel horizontally about our mother, our father, our parental figure is also how we relate to Jesus. And the Lord says today, I want you to know the love of a father that can never fail. For the Lord says today, this is a Kairos moment for many of you. Because I'm going to change that poor reflection of Jesus that was seen through your mother and your father. For the Lord says today, I'm going to deliver you this day out of it. For the Lord says today, I'm an ever-loving God who cannot lie. For the Lord says today, I love you no matter what you do or don't do. For the Lord says today, I love you in spite of yourself. For the Lord says today, there is nothing that can keep you from the love of God. For the Lord says today, like Johnny said, if you make your bed in hell, he's going to be there with you also. For the Lord says today, if you will just get an image of me, a proper image of me, 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 and who I am as an ever-loving God, then it's going to change how you feel. It's going to change how you respond to Jesus. It's going to change how you respond to those around you. For the Lord says today, I am here and I am willing to deliver you out of what you thought God was, of what you thought he should and shouldn't be, of what he thought that you he couldn't do for you because you didn't even think he loved you because of your parents who didn't love you. For the Lord says today, I am not that God. Because that God does not exist. So the Lord says today, if you will look to me and let me recreate that image of you. Let me bridge that gap of who you are and who you thought God was with that love that can never fail. He says this will be a turning point and a Kairos moment in your heart. Praise the Lord. God's so good. Amen. We do have some prayer concerns we're going to lift before the Lord. I'll read the names off. And I would like each one of you to grab hold of at least one of the names of the people we're going to pray for for healing and join me in believing God. When we pray, I'm believing that God's going to come upon every person that's sick and he's going to heal. Lillian needs our prayers today for healing. Judy needs our prayers for healing. Tom and Linda also. Mary Dries, Linda Dries Hunt, Nathan. Elena needs healing. Let's believe God for all of these individuals. Lee and Barb need healing. Also, we need to be praying for what's happening over in the Middle East. We need to lift Israel up. Can you say amen? And we need to pray for the upcoming election. Will you stand and join me? And the Bible says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'm there. And then he goes on to say, if any two of you shall touch any one thing on earth together in agreement, it'll be done by the Father in heaven. Dear Father, we thank you for your anointing that breaks every yoke. We thank you for the stripes that Jesus bore for our healing. I lift these individuals up, and I believe with your faith that you're going to touch them this morning, those that are here and those who are not. I lift Linda up, I lift Judy up in Jesus' name. Both of these heal by your mighty hand and by your mighty power. Tom and Linda heal in Jesus' name. I pray for Nathan in the hospital that you will heal and restore him back to health. I pray for Mary Dries that you touch her right now and heal her. For Linda Dries Hunt, heal her. For Lee and Barb, heal them in Jesus' name we ask for your glory. And Elena, we ask that you heal her and make her every bit whole. Now, Father, we lift up Israel. We ask that you will fight for Israel, that you will protect Israel in Jesus' name. We pray for the upcoming presidential election that, Lord, your will will be done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And right now, Father, we're just believing you for all of these prayer requests. We're believing for healing in this audience. We're believing for those that I haven't even mentioned this morning that are ill this morning. Heal and restore in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. You may be seated. Our assistant pastor, Rich, is coming. He's going to be sharing the word of God this morning. 
He's got a message on his heart from heaven. I want you to Amen. know that. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, everybody. How are we doing? Good, 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 good. Got a couple quick things to go over first. Tonight, you see the, the fire starter sign is over there? It means that there's fire starters tonight, 6.30, right next door. Now, let me tell you about fire starters, if you don't know about fire starters. P Patty and I have been to uh, BKI. We've attended um, Karis Bible College. We uh, actually are heading for Lancaster this week for the um, Apostle. What, what's it called? Uh, the, the Voice of the Apostles. Okay, and I just want you to know everything, and I'm not saying this to make it sound like it, uh, we're proud of the fact that we had to pay for all this stuff, but we've paid thousands of dollars for this education, and you can come tonight and get it for free, and get food too. So just think free food, and let that be the bait, and then come and get an education that somebody paid thousands of dollars for, and you can get it for free. And like we say, if it's free, it's for me, right? So I hope to see, you know, we have a, we have a great group that comes to fire starters, and, but there's room for more. So come, get closer to God, get closer to the Holy Spirit. I have some friends in the audience that I'm going to embarrass. I'm so sorry. But uh, about two years ago, you might have seen up on these screens this awesome, handsome, bald guy with a long beard getting baptized out at Sturgis. Do you all remember that? Okay, well, he's sitting right back there with his wife, Susan, Susan, all the way from Gillette, Wyoming. Oh, yeah. They, they, they also wear the Property of Jesus t-shirts because they are part of free oil change. And a special announcement, they are starting the oil change back. Patty and I are not, but there will be a free oil change in Sturgis next year. So praise God for, the, for that. All right, so much for the selfless plugs. So last time I was up here, I talked about Noah, and I told you guys that I didn't have enough time, so we were going to do part two, right? Sorry. God had a different plan. I was sure that that's what we were going to do. And then... Uh, I think it was Wednesday morning, I was doing my devotions, and it was really cold. And I, I go, at 7 o'clock every morning, I, we get up at like 5.30, we do our devotions, we have our time with God. Then at 7 o'clock, I go out and ride my bicycle. And I usually ride about 8 miles. That's how I keep this girlish figure. And um, <laughs> what are you laughing at? But anyway, um, God said, no, go for a walk today. And I used to walk a lot, so I, instead of riding my bike, I went for a walk, and I'm walking, and God said, Pastor's message last week was so awesome. It was so amazing, wasn't it? I mean, yeah, yeah, all right? And so, so he talked about the start of revival, right, and what we needed to do for revival, and I heard these awesome testimonies. People came up to me and said, you know, I went and apologized to this person, and I went and forgave this person, and I went... And so that's the start, right? That's the start. So today I want to talk about, let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. So, and I, I want to dedicate today's message to a member of our congregation who is seated right now next to Jesus. <laughs> Can you give me the, the first slide? And so, oh yeah. It's not Susan. Susan is still alive. Okay, <laughs> but for the people that don't know, the man standing next to Susan, his name is Bernard Spell. And if you, do, if you recall Bernard, when he would come up and pray for the offering, what would he say? Give me the next slide, please. Let's have an attitude of gratitude. I wish I could say it as eloquently as Bernard could. But that's what Bernard always said. Let's have an attitude of gratitude. So today, we're going to talk about what it's like to have an attitude of gratitude. So 
What is revival? I think Pastor told us what revival was last week, right? And how we have the circle, and it starts with us, right? And so how many folks in this church have been to, like, one of the big revivals? I know a bunch of you have been to Toronto, right? Patty and I have been to Lakeland. So I can only talk about the Lakeland church, okay? Now, in Lakeland, there are tons of churches, and Patty and I have been blessed because we have friends in the Assembly of God. And so we've been to Lakeland Assembly of God. Place is huge. I mean, the ushers run around with iPads. And, you know, there's directors parking in the parking lot. And, I mean, it's just this huge campus. Guess what? That's not where revival broke out. <laughs> revival broke out at this little church down next to the homeless encampment. Right? And... It grew so big that they filled a baseball stadium, and then they had to move from there, and then they went to some other arena, and they had to move from there. Until they were done, they were at an airport with these giant portable buildings <laughs> baptizing or anointing people with oil. I remember watching on God TV the one night, they were anointing people with oil, and they had five-gallon buckets and, like, mops. <laughs> I mean... I mean Hundreds of thousands of people attended that revival. And it wasn't the big, shiny church on the hill that started it. It was the little church. So I said that to say this. It's not about the building. It's not about the infrastructure. It's about the infrastructure in our heart. So I say that Brookside might not be the biggest church in the Susquehanna Valley. It might not have all the resources of some of the other churches. But you know what we have? Our hearts. So for revival to start, let's, look up, let, let's take a look at our hearts. So give me the, the next slide. We're going to start in the Old Testament, which is, you all know is usually not my favorite. Second Chronicles 7.14. Now, let me, let me set this up. This is Solomon. The Lord speaking to Solomon, Solomon's temple, right? So Solomon was David's son. David built the temple, right? And they're getting ready to go to the temple, God's dwelling place. And the Lord says, then if my people who are called by my name will humble, right? Will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear them from heaven. And will forgive their sins and restore their land. Now, humble. I'm not like, Pastor would have had humble underlined. So imagine that it's underlined. Okay? Humble. What does humble mean? It means you're not proud. It can mean submission to God. Right? Work towards others', others needs before your own. Yes. Be a good listener. I struggle with that one, man. <laughs> I can't keep my mouth shut. I need to humble myself. You guys have all heard my humble joke before. Do you want to hear it again? Yeah. Okay. So my, me and my friend Denny Nisley from Christ in Action, we wrote a book on humility, and, but we haven't been able to publish it yet because we're fighting over whose picture should be on the cover. It's even funny, I, I, like, I, I've heard it like 4,000 times, and I, I still, <laughs> so let's continue on to, to verse 15, it says, my eyes will be open, and my ears attentive to every prayer made in this place, right? So if we humble ourselves, and we pray, the Lord's eyes will be open. And his ears will be attentive to everything in this place. But I, there's even better news from there. Because before Jesus, we had to go to the temple where God dwelled. As Christians, as believers, where does God dwell now? In our hearts. Our bodies are the temple. We have immediate access. We don't have to travel we don't have to place sacrifices at the altar. All we have to do is humble ourselves and praise him. I, I, I can just feel revival coming already. I can feel it. 
Proverbs 8, 17, I don't have a slide for this. It says, I love all who love me. We need to love him because he loved us first. Those who search surely will find me. We need to search for God. We know he's right here, but do we pay attention? Do we pay attention? That's a question. Go ahead and give me the next slide. This is what God told me while I'm walking down Columbia Hill Road. Ant. Ant. There are ants in this building. <laughs> Where's the exterminator? You're the, you're, you're the exterminator. So what, what, what ant is, actually, is an acronym, right? For automatic negative thoughts. Oh, yeah, automatic negative thoughts. Who has ants? Come on. Come on. Come on. Well, keep going. Keep going. All right. Well, you know, we were kind of set up to have automatic negative thoughts. Because when did, when did ants come into the world? So somebody said it. It came in with sin. As soon as sin came into the world, ants arrived. Yeah. It's a very natural experience. You know, God kind of designed us that way because it's also our brains are wired as survival with survival mechanisms, right? So we have ants all the time and we don't even know it. Like sometimes we're walking towards the door, right? And our brain is automatically trying to figure out how to open that door, right? Is that a positive thought? Yeah, but the other thought is the door's closed. How do I fix this, right? That's where we go. The door is closed. How, you come to an intersection and you're trying to make a left turn. Who leaves church and comes out over by the Mexican restaurant in the motel and tries to turn left, right? Is that like the hairiest left turn you're ever going to make in your life? Like you don't know if the other people are coming, da, 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 right? And so, so you go into this ant, you have this, is this that guy going to turn his turn signal on? Is his turn signal on? Why isn't that guy using his turn signal? Right. Those are all ants, you know? Like, so here, here's an ant. I dropped the pen. Now I got to bend over and pick it up. Oh, man. If I didn't drop that pen, I wouldn't have had to bend over and pick it up. I mean, it's just... They're, ants are in our, <laughs> ants are all over the place, and they're in our life all the time. But these negative thoughts keep us from someone and something. Give, let me have the next slide, please. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good. And not for disaster. God doesn't, everybody say disaster. God doesn't want us to have a disaster. He wants to give us a future of hope. He wants to give us a future of hope. You know what? God wants the best for us all the time. Yet we can all have these negative thoughts. You know, uh, I, I, there's been a few times in my life I've been called like a negative nil, nilly. Is that, is that how it goes? Negative nilly. Negative nilly. 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 Nancy. Well, that's a new one. Sorry, Nancy. I was picking on Nilly, but apparently you're <laughs> vulnerable too. <laughs> but how did they, you know, think about Adam and Eve, right? Everything was great for them, right? They're in the garden. They had all they wanted to eat. They could do everything they want. God came and visited them every day. And then they ate the fruit. And what was the first thing they did after they ate the fruit? Yeah. And they went and hid from God. Right? They went and hid from God. So as soon as sin entered the world, we had negative thoughts. Right? Here comes God. Let's go hide. Right? They never had that before. God is, you know, God was their buddy. They were living with God. God was their Jehovah Jireh, their provider. Right? And then all of a sudden... Oh, let's go hide. Sin is bad, isn't it? 
But, you know, we don't have that choice. We don't have that choice. But in Jeremiah goes on to say in verse 12, in those days when you pray, I will listen. Okay? So we need to get God's attention, don't we? Because we want him to listen. So we, I really feel like, and you know, this message is for me because I struggle with this stuff all the time. But I really feel like if we can learn to consolidate the negative thoughts and focus on the positive thoughts, right? So when something good happens, where do we store that? I believe it goes back. Right? But when something bad happens, it stays in the forefront. You know, like how many, how many great things happen to you in a day and then just one thing happens? You know, my mocha latte, frappe, whatever, didn't have Madagascar cinnamon and my day is ruined because of it. <laughs> you know? Now, I walked out and, uh, Somebody shook my hand and said, have a great day. You know what? I don't remember that. I don't remember that. I, to, I, I told this story because I ride my bicycle a lot. And uh, does everybody remember O.J. Simpson and the white Bronco? Yeah. This has nothing to do with O.J. Simpson, or, but it does have to do with the white Bronco. When I, when I, sometimes I ride my bicycle to work, not my motor, my bicycle. And so, you know, it's an arrow. We live in a country. It's an arrow. And, all the, and on my way to work, maybe 100 cars will pass me. Right? And one day... I'm going, and there's this white Bronco, and I swear O.J. Simpson was driving because his mirror was this far away from me. Did I remember those hundred people that passed me with no problem? No. I'm still preaching about the white Bronco today, right? Because <laughs> that's how our brains work. And, but there's a way we can overcome it. There's a way we can overcome it. Next Acronym, please. APR. Annual percentage rate. No. <laughs> That's what you're all thinking, right? Well, let, let's, let's change that and let's see what APR stands for. Automatic praise response. Ooh, I didn't get a round of applause for that. <laughs> Automatic praise response response. Right? What if we rewired ourselves that we, all we did was praise the Lord? What did it say in First Chronicles? If we humble ourselves, right, he will dwell with us. Well, he's already here. He's already here. Let's give him some praise. Yeah, it's, it's easy to forget. It's always easy to remember the bad things. Like, I just dropped my pen. And I automatically bend over and go, thank you, Jesus, that I can bend over. Amen. Right? Yeah. Yeah. How about it? How's that for a concept? Thank you, Jesus. I can bend over. Not, oh, I got to bend over and pick up that pen I dropped. Right? Thank you, Jesus. I can bend over. So how often do you say thank you to Jesus? Once a day? Twice a day? Never? Oh, I, I got more response to never than I did anything else. Do you do it 10 times a day? Scripture tells us that God dwells in the throne of our praises. Right? In the throne of our praises. Is it hard to praise him? Are you sure? Okay. Let's find out. Because I think right now, Jesse, we're going to take a praise break. Praise break. Come on. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Woo, woo. Woo, woo. Praise break. How about that? Yeah, was that cool? Yeah, yeah. Patty wanted me to tell the, the moms with the little babies to pinch them because then they would scream too. But I'm not that mean. Didn't that feel good? Did that feel good? Yeah. So, you know, sometimes we just got to 
take a praise break. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> you know, in Psalm 63, David says, I don't have a slide for this. It says, I will praise you as long as I live. Lifting my hands, you know, and thank you, Johnny, because this morning you talked about lifting your hands, you know, and, and worship was great today, wasn't it? It really was. And guess what? Revival comes when worship is filled with praise. Amen. And God is dwelling on, and the first thing we think of is praising him. When we all have that spirit of praising him, then revival will come. Let's talk about Paul. Because you say, well, you know, it, it's hard to praise him because I got this going on, I got that going on, I got this going on, and I got that going on. Philippians 4, verses 12 and 13 says, I know how to live, among, live on almost nothing or with everything, right? I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty with plenty or little. For 13, everybody knows 13. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Amen. Right? So, you know, Paul had some serious things going on. Right? He was thrown in jail, put on a ship, shipwrecked. But in all things, he remembers that it's Christ who gives him strength. And why can Christ give Paul strength? Because Jesus lived as a man on this earth. He was a refugee as a baby. He, he, he was exiled to another country as a baby to escape King Herod. He's felt everything that we have felt. Did Jesus grow up in a wealthy family, you know, in the suburbs with an in-ground pool? No, no. He was the son of a carpenter. He lived an impoverished life. He's been there w with us. He, can, he knows what we've felt. Sometimes I run on the back, so I have to look. Let's, let's look at Ephesians real quick. Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. Now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power, at work within us to accomplish indefinitely more than we might even think of. He can do more than we can even think of. Yeah, glory to him in the church and in Jesus Christ through all generations forever and ever. Can we give him more glory? Yeah, we can. Let's take a praise break. Praise break. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyway, you know, there's a great song out right now. Hallelujah anyway, right? Hallelujah anyway. My car broke down. This guy yelled at me. That happened. This happened. You know, the kids need braces. I forgot the formula at home. I had to home and get it. I don't know where Tyler is right now. But hallelujah anyway. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we're... How does revival come? Revival comes when we praise, when we praise, when we praise. When our first thoughts are, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, when Patty and I were blessed to be able to go to the Lakeland Revival and experience it firsthand, you know what we felt there? We felt the love. There was just... That building was just filled with love. Everywhere you looked, there was love. There was love from the worship team. There was love from the ushers. There, there was love in the restrooms. <laughs> I mean, it, it was, it, no, but it was. It was love. And folks, maybe that's what we're missing. Maybe that's what we're missing. You know, can happy rich Get serious? You know, why don't we have revival at Brookside? Why? It's not the pastor's fault. Certainly not the worship team's fault. I'm not going to stick up for the assistant pastor. You guys can do that on your own. <laughs> but, but the fact of the matter is, 
it's all of our faults. Because revival starts with us. And Pastor talked about the circle, right? The circle. And we needed to start the circle. But what if we took it a step further? What if we let other people into our circle, right? And our circles grow. So let's do a little exercise right now as the worship team heads this way. Turn to the person next to you and tell them that Jesus, no, not that Jesus loves you. We have that on our wristband, right? So we already know that Jesus loves us. Tell the person next to you that you love them. Okay. Great job. Great job. Okay. Guess what, folks? That was easy because generally we're sitting next to the people we like and love, right? So let's expand our circles a little bit. Let's go tell somebody else that we love them. I love you, Vicki. I love you, Randy. I love you, Dan. I love you, Dan. There you go. I love you, Todd. I love you, Rod. I love you, Amy. I love you, Susan. Marlena. Uh, love you, Sue and Dave. See? Let's take a praise break. <laughs> praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> praise break. Praise break. Here we go. <laughs> That's how revival starts. When we hallelujah anyway. Wear your bracelet. Remember that Jesus loves you, right? And remember to praise him. What's APR mean? Praise response. Automatic praise response. So here's the next challenge. You guys did great with the first one. All right, the second one gets harder, though. All right, start a journal. Write it down. Write down the good stuff, okay? The, you know what? We can't change the bad stuff, but we can praise them for the good stuff, right? right? And you'd be surprised how, much, how many good things happen in a day if you focus on that. So if we focus on praising him and we focus on loving one another, Revival comes. What was the last thing that Jesus taught to his disciples before he went to the cross? Love one another. Love one another. Yeah, th those, the last time Jesus sat down with his disciples, the very last word he, words he said to them before he went to the cross makes me cry. <laughs> Love one another. There's revival in the praise and there's revival in the love. Love one another. That's the greatest commandment from Jesus. So Johnny's going to take over and, uh, <laughs> and we're, hallelujah, we're going to do a song. Now, praise break. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. So we did a praise break. You know why we did a praise break? Because two members of our church, two men in our church, are getting baptized today right after the service. So stick around after the song. You know why? Because why do we get baptized? Because we are dead and we are made new. And you know what? There are no works that can get us saved and that can get us into heaven. This has nothing to do with that. But you know what it has to do with? It has to do with, our, with these men's heart. And they are willing to publicly display and humble themselves, just like Jesus humbled himself and was baptized. Today is an awesome day <laughs> for these two guys. So let's all stand up. Sorry, I took your line. Raise our hands, right? And let's give him all the praise. Because who deserves it? He does. Found in your 
name the power to save with only a whisper mountain shake Jesus I hope and say you made a way you've unlocked these chains here in your presence stronghold break freed by the love you Give you the highest praise. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. We give you the highest praise. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. All right, now, church, I want y'all to come on up front here. Come on, I want to see who's going to participate. We're in this together. Come on now, come on, I'm calling you out. Here we go. Come on, get out of those aisles. Come on, all right, thank you for the six or eight people that are listening. Here we go, come on. There on a tree, a merciful king was broken and shamed for all to see. The father laid down his son. From darkness to light, death lost to life, heaven and earth will join and sing. Jesus has overcome. We give you the highest praise. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. Deserve it all, for you deserve it all. We give you the highest praise. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. We give you the highest praise. You deserve it all. For you deserve it every breath with every breath that's in my lungs my heart cries out to you belongs the glory and through every loss or victory my soul will rise to only bring you glory Oh, 
Take that praise break now. Come on. Give it up. church. Your presence. 
Lord for being here right now thank you for dwelling in our praises thank you that you've allowed our circles of revival to expand and expand and expand thank you that revival isn't coming but revival is here now because it starts in our heart with an attitude of gratitude thank you thank you for the saints that came before us we praise you Lord we thank you. Thank you that you are here. Thank you that we can worship you. Thank you for the lists we can write this week and praise you for what you've done for us. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Amen.
We're going to have a baptism here in a couple minutes. Some of us just need to change our clothes. So if you want to hang out and keep praising him, that's fine. Uh, have a great week, everybody.